Hello, hello, Kalu Kale. My name is Nopad, and on and I write games for fun. So what are we doing today? Today we are working on the domain scale. That is it. That is what we are working on. I got every single name done of the of the various areas. I've managed to get a lot of things set up. I kind of need to spend some time fixing some things up to make it look not as bad, but every single thing does actually have a name at this point. And yeah, even Zed, Zed's feed and seed. Every single place does in fact have a thing at least in it. They've got names, they've got locations, and they're all slightly different from one another. Some of them are anyway, some of them aren't. So, what's the domain scale? Well, if we zoom in here 200%, obviously you can tell this is the full scale map. There's a lot of map to go around. Very small map though, uh, simply because of the scale of the book we're working with here. Uh, now, what we need to do at this point is we need to take all of this and write it down to make sure that shit works. That's the secret there, kids. Uh, that's what's going on. What's your least favorite domain mechanic in other game? Well, the thing with domains is you don't see them very often. And there's a few reasons you don't see them very often. I think one of the big things is you can get incredibly detailed with them. You can get incredibly, like, autistic about things. Like, I need to micromanage every building of every location of every second of every moment. Or you can get so broad that it suddenly stops mattering. Where it's like, I have a kingdom, and it's got a plus one power rating. And then, okay, my kingdom got bigger, so now I have a plus two power rating. It's things like that. You can kind of go very radical in different directions. Uh, and I think that's one of the major reasons we just don't see domain stuff pop up very often. Domain stuff doesn't really show itself really all that often because it is such a weird mechanic that nobody like likes dealing with. Uh, hence why I'm kind of making that scale into this particular world, you could say, very loose. It's gonna be, you know, we, we've pulled out so far at this point, it's going to be very basic, and we're gonna make this as simple and easy as possible to understand, simply because we need to have it, but I don't want to bog people down with it too much because it's again so massive. Now, if we want to be really precise about things, like domain mechanics, when I talk about domain mechanics, it's uh we're we're talking about like kingdom builder, like kingdom builder TTRPG. Let's see what we have got. You can even see right here that that's just not really a really a thing I guess Kingmaker does it Mayuku Kingdom does it but Mayuku Kingdoms make you kingdoms fucking weird <laughs> make you kingdom you gotta remember is an entire game built around the fact that your your kingdom is a dungeon that is a entire thing and it's also cards <laughs> lots of cards involved I think probably the like biggest example would be the kingmaker modules like kingmaker kingdom like it's kind of like this scale of things like oh well you can build all these things because it's a kingmaker game but like i d <laughs> there's a reason even in the video game they like actively go out of their way of saying well you don't need to do this. You could just automate it. You could just remove this entire section of the game simply because it's not that. It's annoying, okay? Uh, <laughs> so I think, like, you know, kingdom management stuff is just like some people really want it, some people don't. I've never really seen it done 
Never really seen it done. Let's just call it spade a spare. Spade there. Uh, and the times I have seen it done, again, it's... It's things like this, kind of like very broad or like very like... Everyone's got ability scores. <laughs> Get it? Because the kingdom's like a character. Ta-da! <laughs> it's like, oh... Alright, that's okie dokie then. That's a little goofy. Probably the last one to really uh to really go anywhere. If you want if you want to be like I know Birthright D and D like Birthright did a big thing about this. In which I would be remiss to say that you know Birthright didn't have an influence on this game for a variety of reasons. But Birthright is also a very weird setting and very weird idea, and you kind of even see this is just like a part of Birthright, mind you. This is like the main area of Birthright. But like, Birthright's fucking huge, <laughs> and all of these places are very detailed. Uh, but it's a technically a kingdom management game, but it's also a kingdom management game in which you're playing 2nd edition D&D, &D, and you also do other things. If I can get Birthright Gorgon's Alliance working, I would, but it's a very weird old game. So yeah, in case that answers your question there, Nuni, what's my least favorite domain mechanic is they just, domain mechanics just don't exist in other games. So, let's get to it. Um, <laughs> how do I want to work this? Where the where the clansman where the clansman is a is a individual an individual in a sea in a sea of, in a sea of others. The clan is a family among is a family among mm, growing in prominence, growing in prominence. The domain is the is the summation is the summation of holding of holdings and power. The clan that the clan that the clan ha that the clan has that the clan has. Uh, during their during their conquests and deals on Callis, during their conquests and deals on Callis, <clears throat> their conquests and deals on Callis, each of the great clans, great cl the great clans of Cal, the class, the great clans will jock will fight fight for supremacy, fight for supremacy. And to to carve themselves carve themselves out a kingdom a kingdom a kingdom for themselves a kingdom for themselves on the, kingdom for themselves on the island uh, on the island their domain their domain will be will be the main will be the main method of mm, of, secu of securing the resources, of securing the resources and manpower necessary to protect their border, to protect their borders, protect their borders and rally their and rally their troop and rally their troop and rally their troops mm -hmm. as they grow as they grow in power as they grow in power other other blocks uh, other great clans. Their great clans will desire will desire their territory, will desire their territory and muster their own and muster their own strength. Oppose, to oppose them, oppose them. This is the game. Uh, Callus is Callus is but a is but a large board for the game for the game of throne for a game of thrones. Get it because it's a Game of Thrones reference. Let's see, uh, carve out prominence and individual supremacy to carve out a kingdom for themselves on this island. Okay. Ta-da! See, I'm very clever because I said Game of Thrones. Uh, 
what are are holding my omega brain my omega brain play is going on here you know see my brain literally exploding with genius or I'm incredibly tired I don't know yet People are posting cringe in my server. It do be that way. People are citing Sword of the Stranger in my server. People are... Uh, what a beautiful day for terrible content. So, what are holdings? Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello, helicopter. How are you? Mm -hmm. Callus is divided. Callus is divided up in up into major settle settlements referred to referred to as hold refer to referred to as holdings. The each of these each of these represent 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 a major a major area a major area of power. Uh, each of these represent a population, a population center, center on the, the on the island, on the island, and those who control and those who control them, control them. Let's see, each of these represent a population center on the island, and those who control them control the flow, control the flow of trade, of trade, manpower, manpower, and fate of uh, and fate of the island, and fate of uh, and fate of Callus. Each of the each of the holdings have mm, each of the holdings have five to have five major have five identifying identifying feet identifying features about about them the uh, the ty uh, type wealth glory. Manpower and fortification and fortification. The type of the hold, uh, the type of the holding indi indicates what it specialize, what it specializes, what it specializes in, as well as the size of the as well as size of the holding itself. Uh, size of the holding itself. A ta a village, a village is a has a. Population round one. What would be village size? Mm. Village has a population of around a thousand, a thousand, but a thousand soul, a thousand individual. A village has a population of around a thousand, has a thousand individuals. Those smaller, those smaller hovels do, uh, actually would be. Those smaller hamlets, hamlets dot, uh, dot the country, dot the countryside. A town, a town is a, a town, uh, uh, around a thousand individuals. A town, a town though, is a up, is a upgraded, upgraded village. Upgraded village that hold that holds even that is what would be a town size. I would say town size settlement hierarchy. Tell me more about the settlement hierarchy system. Tell me more about settlement hierarchy. Tell me more. Let's see the upgraded village that ho that has that has its own has its own 
Um, economy. Let's see. That has its own economy as well as around two thousand. As well as around five thousand. Uh, as well as around five thousand. Uh, individuals. Individuals who call it. Hmm. Welcome to the wonderful world of defining fucking things. That's why I usually don't like de detailing things. It's just like, towns are bigger than villages. That's all you need to know. As well, 5,000 individuals who call it home. As the, uh, each of the type, each of the types also... So this day the last day of clan head. Maybe. It depends on how far we go. Uh, if there is going to be another day, it would be one final day on Monday. This is going to be the last or second to last. Again, it kind of depends on how... I started a little bit later than I had planned. But, uh... do be that way sometimes. So, yeah. It, again, if it's not the last day, it's going to be the second to last day. Let's see. Each of the types of... And the upgrade village zone economy as well as around 5,000 of which... Each of the types of... <laughs> Specialized in their own. Specialized in their own. In their own. Each of the types of holdings are specialized in their own. In in their in their own in their own way. Civil uh civil holdings uh, civil holding civil holdings. Mm -hmm. Let's see civil holdings oh civil holdings produce. Produce wealth, uh, produce wealth. Uh, what would be cultural holdings? Cultural holdings produce glory, produce glory, and military holdings. And military holdings produce manpower. And produce manpower. So we just wanted to be like, here's a quick introduction to what this is. This is all you need to know what a basic holding is. So and what I'm going to do right here is we're going to put a, we're going to insert a table. Insert a table like this. It's going to be one, two, three, image, basic description. Mmm. -hmm. What we need to do, we need to merge this. Civic holdings, uh, civic, civic holdings. Civic holdings. So this is going to be village, town, city. I could probably Probably cut it down. No, no, no. We probably have to do this. So I'm going to have to insert the particular symbol I want. Uh, that won't be too difficult. I just have to go into like paint.net and draw them again. Um. Mm, small communities. Hmm. Built around particular trade or farming. Town, a oh, larger, um, larger center centers of commerce, uh, commerce in a, in an area, larger centers of commerce in an area produces uh, produces many good produces many goods. The largest urban center centers and. Uh, well, uh, Urban centers, urban centers, and densely populate and densely populated with uh, with people, and densely populated with people, people and goods. 
Kind of the idea of like, yeah, if you want a... Do you want to make... If you want to make money, you're going to go to... You're going to go to a city. You want a town. If we want, we're going to do uh, cultural holdings, which is going to be a shrine, monastery, kirk. Mm. A hovel, a um, a tiny, a tiny, a group of individual, a tiny group of individuals can take care. Take care of a cultural of a cultural landmark, monastery. A a small town. A small town has sprung up. Has sprung up around a cultural building. Cultural building or mm. I don't want to work this kind of a culture. Um, town. Mm, urban air, urbanize, urbanize places, uh, places of cultural, of cultural, cultural, if not economic, economic, uh, significance. Kind of the idea is that a shrine is effectively a glorified landmark. There are there are people who live around the landmark. There are people there clearly, but it may not be the richest place. That's not they're not designed to be rich. We don't really make many goods. We make enough to survive and take care of this. Monasteries are here's an important thing of this area. Here is a giant oasis around here in, you know, here's a giant geothermal vent effectively that we use these huge baths in that we keep care of. This is a giant fucking rock we have carved into the side of a mountain that we have convinced ourselves is a, is a giant's home. That's why we're here. It's a monastery. It's an important place. It's not a very big town. It's just there for a very particular reason. Uh, military holdings. Mm -hmm. Fort, a fort. Keep, castle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or palisade and, bar and barracks protect a small, a small town, a small community. A form of mm, 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 mm. A a massive mm, citadel of stone. Mm, citadel of stone. Uh, citadel of stonework that makes it mm, that. Uh, mm, for soldiers to walk to it's kind of the idea of like hey i own a fort it's pretty much a palisade that's all it is yeah the stream is centered around just the domain scale today effectively the idea is i own, we own a fort is effectively code for we own effectively a wooden hut <laughs> we, we own a wooden place that we can establish like actual soldiers at Mm. You know, it's not the best, but it's at least home. Uh, see. Wealth and glory. Wealth and glory are resources. Are resources produced by 
Let's see, Wealth and Glory are resources produced by the Holdings. By the Holdings. The uh, Holdings every season. Every season. That allows the clan allows the clan to leverage certain aspects, certain aspects of their to mm, other point uh, others around them or improve improve themselves. Wealth is wealth is measured. Wealth is the abstracted, is the abstracted concept, uh, abstracted concept of monetary, of monetary, um, monetary value. Uh, most, most Indonesian silver, silvers are still accepted, of course, accepted, of course, but most trade, most trade on the, uh, most trade on callus. Mm. Is through barter and the knee and Aaron Gold coins. Let's see, is done through barter, barter is done through barter, or metallic mm, mm, <coughs> bars for larger for larger deal for larger deals. Each wealth. Mm, Wealth can be you can be used to outfit outfit new troops for new units, new units for a war band. Let's see, wealth can be used to outfit new units for a war band. Um, how do I want to do this? Uh, pay for uh, pay for investment, pay for investments, or bribe or bribe uh, other others bribe others away as, as tribute. As tribute. Glory, uh, glory is the culture is the, the cultural value that the clan has a map and has amassed. In short, it's the it's the it's the value that the clan that the clan's word has. The clan it's the value that the clan's word has. While uh, while they can use they can use glory to improve themselves prove themselves they may also use it use it as a mm, 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 bribing or asking or asking assistant assistance from up uh, from their na from their neighbors from their from their allies kind of the idea is wealth is just abstracted money it's just there's wealth what do you can do what can you do with wealth we can buy things with it and make improvements we can do things it's not really strict money because you can't really buy anything because i didn't want to worry about that but what it is is just thing you know kind of a wealth factor that you can use and leverage you don't really have to worry about money on that idea, but if you like, you're transporting wealth. It's you're transporting a lot of money, relatively speaking. Peasants do not have wealth. You have wealth <laughs> because you're a great clan. Even one wealth makes you pretty much a lot more uh, wealthy than other people around you. A great clan with one wealth is someone who actually has some money with them. Uh, but you know, someone with zero wealth is effectively a, you know, effectively a dirt farmer. Good old-fashioned dirt farming. Mm. Mm. Finally, manpower and fortification. Uh, fortification. Manpower is the amount of able-bodied, able-bodied soldiers. Able-bodied. Men willing, uh, willing to fight, fight and die for the great, for the great clan, for the great clan, mm, for the, uh, for, uh, for the clan during, uh, when mustering, when mustering a war band, when mustering a war band, they may, uh, they may use as much, they may use as much manpower as they wish, uh, they may use as much manpower as they wish. Fortification, uh, manpower as they wish, which will, mm, 
However, however, any any men who die heroically, die heroically will only be replaced at the start at the start of the next year at the start of the next year. If you completely get all of your men killed and everyone dies, you're not getting them back exactly. <laughs> so it's like if you kind of go on campaign a lot, it's not like hey, we're constantly refilling all our soldiers. No, you're losing them pretty consistently. That's why, you know, even any battle is kind of any war band at size engagement is kind of like a, ooh, we don't really want to do this. That also kind of makes kind of a yearly cycle of we've burnt each other out just based off manpower. So we don't really, you know, Pyrrhic victories are possible just as much as, you know, kind of these more heroic ones. And sometimes it may be better to just retreat, but you've caused a lot of casualties. You know, it's like, hey, you outnumber us two to one. You know, we can't really win this fight straight up, but we've led you into a trap. We've led you to an ambush where we've taken off a lot of your men and we fucked off. We left. And because you can't retaliate, suddenly now, you know, you, we've wore down your war band to the point where either we can fight you on more even, more even holdings or maybe we can even just outright destroy you. That's kind of the idea there. You can't immediately replace all your men. It's easy to replace your men when the year ticks around, but that's an entire season where everyone's manpower is back. Um, when a when a siege when a siege begin when a siege begin when a siege begins fortifications fortification acts uh, acts as mm, acts as a set number of. That number of quote free manpower uh designated uh free manpower designated designated to the defense to the defense of the to the defense of the uh, defense of the holding defense of the holding uh the mm, will receive fortification uh, we'll see fortification times ten we'll see fortification times five let me check. So this would be 45 times 5. That would be 225. 5 times 5. 25. Not a lot of men, but that's fine. Uh, additional uh, additional manpower, manpower exclusively exclusively for the defense for the defense of the defense of the holding. Times of times of need in times of need, these may be these may be these may be the only these may be the only Guardian, guardians of the whole thing. You go if you burn all of your men. Suddenly, it's like, oh well, all our all our guys are dead. Uh oh, that's bad. Like we've lost a we've lost a lot of people all of a sudden. So we do that. <laughs> Kind of explain what holdings are, kind of how they operate a little bit. We want to do... how do we want to word this? We want to do... Mm -hmm. uh, and the subject of domain level games or kingdom levels, other than not many gains centered around that. A few SOR OSR games that do that, but besides Seeds of War, I don't see anyone doing this main shtick. Uh, I've seen attempts of making revival birthright out of fans, but so they stuck in the D&D black hole. Because uh, it's hard to generate a robust system that can handle multiple players, but ends up being a spreadsheet simulator, or an easy to make a PBT cl a clone 5000 or 5e hack. Funnily enough, there's a PBTA, PBTA game in French that I'd like to read sometimes. is actually based on a concept. That's kind of what I was talking about earlier, Draco, is... The thing with management is that, with especially domain management, you can either get really detailed, where it's, again, you bring up the spreadsheets, we're managing buildings, we're trying to get everything just right, or you can make it like you get a plus one power, make, you know, roll 2d6 for your power rating. Uh, you do have some things like Make You Kingdom, obviously, but where Make You Kingdom is kind of its own thing. Yo, the stream imploded. What do you mean the stream imploded? No, it didn't. 
I don't see anything going wrong. Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing anything wrong on my end there, Draco. I've got no drop frames, no anything, so unless there's some... Well, that's Twitch for you. Eff effectively, the, the summation of it... <laughs> who knows? Daddy Bezos is pissed. Uh, pr Pretty much, like, the main idea is that it's difficult to find a perfect balance because you get things like make you kingdom which is its own thing which is like a fucking card game then you get things like kingmaker which wants you to really manage every detail then you get things like a pbta game where it's like oh well you just roll plus one for very abstracted concepts and you don't really feel like you're managing anything it feels like you're more again just playing a pbta game or something there isn't really a end-all, be-all, good ex good way of doing it, and that's kind of the issue. Is that there is a lot of ways, but no way that is, like, perfect. Because you're going to get a player who is, like, super invested in this, and wants to sit down and move their little fucking abacus around to maximize everything. And you're also going to get a player who has absolutely zero fucks. Uh, who just do do does not care in the slightest about any of this kingdom shit. And I think that's not necessarily a fault of game designers. That's not a fault of anything. It's more of a fault of just the nature of the beast, if that makes sense. Is that it is management. It is something that is very impersonal. And that's why kind of the holding stuff is, do you take a holding? If the answer is, yeah, we take a holding, then... <laughs> you have it now. That's your holding, and that's something you can do. Let's see. Holding management. Mm. Mm. Rulership. So, uh, the... Actually... Mm, is what we can do. Um... Seizing power. Seizing power. Seizing power during, uh... Whether by, whether by for, force, trickery, trickery, or blood, or blood right, the, a clan, a clan, a... The clan will, the clan will... Will find themselves in... Find themselves, clan, a... The clans, the clans will clash will clash over the who will clash over who hold who holds what what holdings every hold every holding every holding on cal every holding on callus um whether dictated uh, dictated or not belong belongs to a great belongs to a great clan belongs to a great clan who would like who would like to maintain who'd like to maintain power on it Who'd like to maintain power? Mm. Oh, who'd like to maintain power? Including, including, including the, including mm, the clans, who, the, the clan, including, uh, who'd like to maintain power? When first beginning, when first starting a clan head saga of the Duine, uh, doing a campaign, the clansmen, the clansmen will own a tier one. Will own a tier one, tier one holding of their choice, their choice anywhere, anywhere, anywhere across Callus, anywhere across Callus. These tier, these tier one holding, the tier one's holdings are are either a, are either a village, shrine. Rhine or fort, uh, or yeah, fort, as they, as they begin, as they begin their adventure, as begin, as they begin their adventures across the island, across, uh, across the island. It's kind of the idea is like you can belong in any of these tier one holdings, like you want to be in a village, a shrine, or a fort, it doesn't really matter. 
The idea is kind of like you're supposed to like build up to those things. And that's, you know, that's kind of the nature of the beast. But we're going to talk about this. Oh, these tears. Um, begin their adventures across the island. Mm. But, uh, but a single, but a single holding is rarely enough, enough for the ambitious. Rarely enough for the ambitious. What occurs? What occurs when a when the clan when the clan seeks to dominate dominate another holding another holding belong belonging to another mm -hmm. belonging to another drama <laughs> drama. If the if the clan if the clansmen manage if the clansmen manage to defeat their defeat their rival the rival in battle, let's see if the clan actually if the clansmen hmm, holding holdings transfer ownership ownership. Let's see holdings transfer ownership in three way in three ways. The Blood right. Uh, blood right is the is the most co is the most common. Uh, let's see. Blood right is is the rarest. Is the rarest. Eff effective. Eff blood right is, is the rarest. When a when a clan when a clan when a great clan when a great clan loses author loses authority or dies out or dies out, all of the local all of the local great clan great clans will. We'll petition. We'll petition for authority. We'll petition for authority of the of the holding, of the holding by the by the local by the locals, assuming they do not they do not create a new great clan. The blood right. Uh, the blood right. Blood right has the has the victorious. Victor, victorious, victorious clan, clan move in and seize the territory, and seize the territory, relatively, relatively bloodless, bloodless by diplo diplomacy, by diplomacy and by diplom, by diplomacy. Effectively, blood right is, uh, blood right is hey. This is this is our area. We you know the the last great clan has died out. They are no longer in power. These people need assistance. They need someone to effectively govern them and they're reaching out to other people being like, "Hey, can one of you govern us?" Uh hence the term, you know, kind of the idea of blood right is, "Hey, we're you know, we're kind of like, please come over here. You know, you have the most, you know, authority over things. Or like, hey, we want protection so you don't fucking raid us constantly. Mm, or bloodless by diplomacy. Actually, I should say, uh, blood right. Also covers legal, uh, legal transfers of ownership. Legal transfer of ownership, such as through, uh, such as through cousin, cousin clans. Clans or intermingled or intermingled clan uh, interclan politics. Interclan um, internal uh, internal um, clan politics. They are effectively like we don't want to be attacked anymore. We're just going to effectively petition people to see like okay we're sorting this out. And who owns the new blood right? If like your cousin clan that you're not technically the same clan but you are kind of he dies you get ownership of it. This is the best way to kind of symbolize blood relation or we're like we're staking a claim to it. This is our blood right. Hello, Kalu Kale. I am doing good. But <laughs> somewhere between great and oh lord let my soul go. Let my people go. You know how it goes. Um uh, what would be another good one? It would be um. Mm, actually, no. Mm. Mm. Actually, um. Inheritance, inheritance is inheritance covers uh, 
Inheritance is is another is another method, slightly different, different from the blood right, some slightly different from the blood right, blood right as the current as the current clan as the current as the current clan and the current clan of the holding, holding would transfer. Uh, mm, would make a would make a secondary clan secondary clan often through often through merit often through marriage of daughters uh daughters or or wayward sons or wayward sons uh the beneficiary beneficiary of their of their land of their lands merging merging two clans together two clans together under under a single clan head under a single clan head finally conquest finally on finally bloody con um finally the dance of kings conquest marching into uh marching marching into a marching into a holding defeating defeating its garrison defeating its garrison and sl and banishing banishing the current holder and banishing the current holders uh, banishing the current holders uh or the survivors or the survivors at least oh uh, we'll tr we'll make we'll make the we'll make the clan of the soul we'll make the clan the sole inheritor inheritor of the hold holding all of the holding all of the holdings investments investments uh all of the holdings uh feature all the holdings features mm. let's see resources let's see all of the holdings resources and mm, actually main resource main resources uh, will decrease will decrease by will decrease by one step will decrease by one step as the as the men mm, mm, as the as the siege takes its hold as the siege takes its hold uh during this uh during the uh the mm, let's see clan may opt to sack the holding instead sack the holding instead Mm. Receiving the season, uh, double the seasonal return. Uh, mm. Mm. Seeing the entire year's return in resources and resources immediately, immediately, but lowering, but lowering all of their value, all of their value values by half. You've effectively completely annihilated a place, made it completely fucking useless for a time. Uh, however, you've sacked it and made a bunch of money off of it. You want to sack cities. I feel like dedicating myself to... Uh, I'm gonna do a piss poor job at this. Mmm... <laughs> How's Clan Head? Good. Clan Head is coming along nicely. This might be the last day. Who knows? I'm kind of working on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so rulership. Mm -mm. Rulership and seasons. Callus is Callus is broken up broken up into two into two season into two seasons. Summer and hearth. Summer and hearth. Uh, actually, it would be um. Sun and heart. The sun season. Uh, the sun season. Sun season is warm, and planting and planting begin. And planting begins. 
It's also a time. It's also a time for conquest. Also a time for heroics. Mm -hmm. Across and venturing across Callus. Callus for the. Mm -hmm. The months leading, uh, leading up to the har, leading up to the harvest, during the, uh, during the suns, during the sun season, during the sun season, mm, the clan will embark, will embark on any major, any major quests or objectives, objectives they may have, they may have as Callus, as Callus is still, still warm enough to trap, warm enough to travel, travel active, actively. <laughs> during the hearth season, during the hearth season, in the hearth season, the the uh, the winter, the touch of winter, the touch of autumn, the touch of the fall, the touch of the fall, and and chill and chill begin and chill begins. Uh, the uh, the peasant, the peasants and freemen. Peasants and free uh, the peasants mm, spend the day spend the days harvesting the crops, harvesting their crops, and paying and paying their and paying their ties for protection, paying their ties for protection. It is many many of the great clans, the great clan, many of the great clans retreat inside in into their territory. Territory or mm, or take up residence, uh, or let's see, retreat into their territory or take up residence in another in in another in another's for the following for the following cold for the following cold months. Those who those who do venture venture out are met with biting cold and deadly nights. Mm. <laughs> when ruling when ruling their uh, when ruling their holdings the clan will receive will receive all of the well, all of the resources resources of their holdings of their holdings at the start of every at the start of every season thus if a it's thus if the clan if the clan owns a owns a village that produces that produces two wealth that produces two wealth and one glory and one glory they will have they will have two they will have two two uh two wealth and one glory and one glory at their disp uh, they will have they'll have that at the start of the season they'll have they will have that uh, they will begin. Uh, they will begin, begin the sun, sun season with it. They will begin the sun and hearth season with it. Hmm. See, if I want to be like really particular, I could be like, "Oh, you get wealth during the sun season, and you get glo you know, you'd be like, you get wealth during the cold during the hearth season, and you get glory during the sun season." But uh. No, you're just gonna get a chunk of it every month. <laughs> and one year is effectively, you know, effectively that. Mm, let's see. Uh, well, they will begin the sun and the heart. Uh, when they will begin the sun and the hearth season. Uh, mm. Uh, they may choose to spend them, spend them immediately, spend them immediately, or build up, build up a venerable, venerable war chest, war chest for the inevitable, inevitable disasters. Mm -hmm. But what to spend? Yo. That's re legitimately vast majority of mm. my war chest, but um, we want to add in. Mm. We want to do 
holding investments. While many, well, many great, well, many great clans would be would be content with sitting on sitting on their sitting on their wealth, wealth and laurel, wealth and laurels. Those forward thinking, those forward thinking may choose may choose to invest. They choose to invest their their wealth, wealth and glory into into improving their improving their holdings. <laughs> Let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, improve into improving their holding. Each of the each of the holding type each of the holding types can uh, have different have different scales uh, different scales of invest different scales of investments, but uh, but each can improve but each can improve but each can improve the uh, each can improve their uh, there it is. Uh, each can improve their resor resources. Each can, but each of them actually, each of them can improve improve all of the res all of the resources. Let's see. Uh, each holding type have different scales of investment. Scales of investments, but each of them can improve all of the resources. Mm hmm. A certain threshold has been reached. The holding, the holding may choose may choose to to upgrade itself. Up to may choose to upgrade itself. Uh, let's see. When a certain threshold has been reached, the holding may choose to upgrade itself into the into the next tier. Uh, next tier of holding over a massive over a massive multi year. Multi-year, possibly decade, uh, possibly decades, long, uh, long improvement, improvement. That's kind of like one of the big things is like, hey, we want to do this huge, massive investment to bump ourselves up next. Maybe you don't want to do that. On the other hand, if you're in a place where there is no fucking castle, building the first castle in the area does kind of shift the balance of power a little bit. It's like, yeah, hello everyone. I have decided to invest in the uh, big fuck off, you know, death castle. Or hey, we've founded a new city. I've seen dead bodies a few days ago. Hello, funeral each ten. Fun fact: I actually saw a body the other day. Yeah, some guy fucking OD to the park. <laughs> I was like, oh fuck. You know when you're, it's one of those things, like, when I'm walking to get coffee, we have this long stretch of park. This, uh, this long stretch of park, and that's where all of the homeless people like to stay. And there was this guy who was clearly, like, passed out. Uh, there was this guy fucking passed out in the, uh, in the park. And I'm like, okay, that's not too too strange. Generally speaking, this is not too strange. People pass out in the park, they OD, they take a shit ton of drugs, blah, 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 blah. I get my coffee and I'm coming back. The fucking ambulance is there and there's like three guys looking over him. They put the, like, the little face mask over him and stuff because he had fucking OD'd. He was dead on the ground. Nobody knew <laughs> Cause they just thought he was asleep, but no, this fucker was dead. <laughs> it was like, oh fuck. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was one of those you don't realize, like, oh, that's a dead body. You're like, oh no, that's a dead fucking body. I'm serious. I live in Israel. I, I, you know, there's serious war there in here. Yeah, I noticed the 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 small micro conflict currently in Israel. Well, the itty bitty tiny micro conflict. Uh, yeah, you know that that small one. <laughs> L listening to the entire. Uh, listening to the entire Israeli Hamas thing has been very fascinating. 
especially here, where half the people talking about it don't know what an Israel is. Uh, as a as a Jew myself, I have some very I have a, some a lot of very mixed opinions on the matter. Uh, but that this is not the place for that. This is the only the place for learning about investing in your magical Gaelic. <laughs> I support the rebuilding of the Great Persia. Exactly. I believe that Jerusalem belongs to the Coptic faith, everyone. Give it to e give it to Ethiopia. They need some help. That's my that's my belief. There we go. That's my insane. Even better. We'll give Jerusalem to India. Just pass the entire like sorry Israel, you've had a good chat shot. I think it's time for India. <laughs> India superpower 2030. It's happening. You don't believe me. Don't worry. Tencent is real. <laughs> uh, what a beautiful day. What a beautiful day for terrible content. This is the kind of content you come here for. But yes, we are working on this. Clan head. Let's see. Uh, when a certain threshold has been reached, holding the upgrade something. Uh, possibly decades long improved. So, how do I want to do this? Hmm. Okay, so actually, we go to Clan Head. Do the Clan Head spreadsheet. Okay, so here's the Clan Head spreadsheet. Uh, we, we love spreadsheets here. Sorry, kings. This is spreadsheet hours. So here's our spreadsheets. We're just going to swing in here. Okay, so generally I consider this to be our minimums. We could probably bump these up a little bit, but we're going to keep these as our minimums. So how do I want to do this? How do I want to do this? Well, the idea is that you can improve each of these in different increments up to a certain a certain value. So let, let's start with this. Let's start with uh, the the lowest lowest tier effectively. So we're going to do something like this maybe. Cities improve wealth at a rate of 3, glory at a rate of 2. Manpower at a grade of 50. I mean, if we do it at like a rank of 50, that could work. Why don't we do that? Like ranks of 50. So it would be... So you can improve at 1, you improve at 2, you improve at 4. So city... You do an investment in the city, you're going to get a shit ton more wealth out of it, but getting up to the city is the hard part. Glory, uh, it's going to be one, one, one. They aren't really built around building glory. Manpower is going to be in scales of 50. So there, fortification is going to be in scales of 5, 5, and 5. Okay, so... If we want to do this correct, I'm trying to think of So this would be four, one, one hundred, five. It's hard because I can't put like plus there at all. I have to put it as like I have to put it as very specific. Mm. Okay, so maybe if we do... Down here, paste unlink. So now we have our. This is our basic. 
this is our basic thing. This is what we're looking at. This is our, this is our home. This is what we deal with. So we're gonna bump this up to 12, we're gonna bump this up to 10. So, mm, how I wanna, it's pretty much how I want this to be written out as, as, as of, you know, villages, villages can improve, you know, plus two, it's plus two wealth every, and it would be like, it would be, if we base it off of seasons, it would be like eight seasons. You do an eight season long investment, you just do a big investment of money. So it's like, okay, actually, I have no idea how I want to do this. This is really awkward. Um, okay, so why don't we do town village one one fifty five? This is the increments. That's the idea. This is the this is the increments that you can actually improve it at. Getting to a town to a city scale is going to take a long time. Mm -hmm. Why don't we do 10, 8, 6. Glory takes a long, longer though. So this is going to be 12 seasons. One every 12 seasons. One every 10 seasons. And this is going to be one every 8. So effectively, 6 years, 5 years, 4 years. This is going to be 50 every, um, I guess it would be a medium one. So as we do eight seasons, six seasons would be 10, eight. It's not as efficient. You're not really building up that much from what you need. And this is going to be like fortification, the big one. Actually, hell, we can even do that and make it a uh, four seasons. Mm, you're gonna need four seasons. Actually, if we do, it takes about a year to build up fortification, but you need to do it 10 times. So that's 10 years of building fortifications up and that takes a long ass time. This is going to be a fucking six season endeavor. It takes three years to like get a little bit of improvement on the walls kind of thing. Because they're so fucking big at that point. Uh Mahalala Mazda. Well So if we do I don't know how we'd want to do the fucking scale. Because if we keep with this idea of like, yeah, you can improve it very, very gradually over time, then... I guess the concept works still. Like, shrines can improve, like, if we make this the slow one, shrines take for fucking ever to build up anything because they're dirt fucking poor. They're not really, people aren't really coming there for a lot, a lot, but it's easy to build up some more cultural significance. Manpower is going to be... We could even make that something like this. Like, you just don't get people wanting to fight effectively at this scale. 
It's like, no, we don't want to, it's, we don't want to fight. This is not what we're like built to do. We aren't, you know, we are not people who want to fight at all. We just want to manage our crops effectively. Um, if we do that, we can even do it like just one, keep it like four, you know, one, one every four season. So just improving this just takes a long ass time. It's very expensive to kind of bump things up. Mm. However, it's a lot easier to bump this stuff up. So if you need four, so that's going to be four, sixteen years already. So we need to, let's maybe dump this down to four. So that'd be two years. We need to bump that up to it's four years. Bump it up twice. That would be eight years to bump it up to eight. We would need. If we do two every four seasons, it would be another eight years. So 16 years to kind of like qualify for even getting up to like this, the glory of a Kirk. You know, so it's like, it's not really as efficient doing that. We do something like that. This though would be. We do that like four every season. Like, yeah, you're just building up. That's all you want to do. You're just dedicating more time to building that up. Manpower, this all works perfectly. So wealth, one every eight, one every 10 seasons, one every 12 seasons. This is a fucking fort. You don't make money at the fort. Why would you ever make money at your fort? You don't make any money. Everyone's like, it's it's just not. Um, Glory is gonna be kind of the same thing. Manpower, though, is we're going to do, like, a hundred every, like, four seasons. Like, it's pretty, like, we'll do every three years, you're going, every three years, you're going to get a hundred men. hundred additional men. Then we're going to get two hundred men. Actually, we need to, uh, that's at five hundred. Actually, you know, we can do a hundred men every... I think keeping that every three years kind of get a hundred more fighting men consistently. Now, mind you, this isn't like a, oh, this is a hundred fighting men. This is like relatively easy to draft fighting men. Like, we're just drafting dudes that are really easy to get a hold of. <laughs> These guys are the ones who are eager to enlist, so getting like a hundred wouldn't be too, too bad. Actually, if we do... We do 125 every six seasons, so that'd be 125 times. So if we've got 500, so that'd be 625, 750, 875, 1,000. Yeah, no, that, that, that adds up, that adds up. And then this is going to be 150 every... Uh, uh, we're just going to do five every. Mm. Okay, so we do that. Because now we know effectively the growth rate. This is the important part. We know the growth, the growth rate. We know how fast things are going to develop. Because now we know that. Now we know the fucking cost. And now we can start doing the investment cost. Mm. We could do wealth, wealth, glory, glory, or we can do wealth, wealth, glory, glory, wealth, glory, wealth, glory. No, it would. Wealth, wealth, I guess we can use wealth for everything. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. Hmm. 
What do you mean from time to time merchant decides to stop by and we just rob him? <laughs> no, we need we need we're building a society, Draco. We can't survive off banditry. Thank you very much. We cannot dis we cannot live off banditry. We're civilized people. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Now, if we want to be really janky about things, what I could do is do a row above. We shrink that down to like size three. We make that black on black. So, improving a village is going to be five wealth. Improving glory of a village is going to be, if we do like eight wealth. Improving manpower is going to be ten wealth. Improving fortifications is going to be... I uh, will say 12 wealth. It's e You have to invest, and then we're going to scale up by... Then we scale up exponentially. So if we start at 5, let's say we're going to then get up to... And then we do 20 wealth. 7, 8. We increase it by... Uh, we do seven, so we then we do start at seven to increase that, and then we do eight, so this would be 23 wealth. Increase it by six, so we need 17 wealth, and then we increase it by eight to be 25 wealth. We increase it by seven, would be 19 wealth, then we increase it by eight, and would be 27 wealth. So if we want to be... Wealth is the easiest, so if we do 7, 8. Glory is a little harder, so maybe we do 8, 10. This is even harder, so we'd start off just 10, and then we go to... Be like 14. 15 and we immediately this would be increased by 12 right off the bat then we immediately go to like 22 so to improve fortification later on it's going to cost you a shit ton of money as a uh, with a town improving civic and holdings is going to cost a lot of money <laughs> it costs, you know, a, a, a ton of money to improve things. Mm. Actually, maybe we... Actually, no, we can do is. Then 
we do what the city was. So the city is 83500. So actually, if we transfer this down, so this would be 83520. City doesn't really have any maximums when it comes to wealth, glory, or manpower because it's a city. That's kind of the idea, so. Mm. Maybe we shift this down. make them pay a protection fee so they aren't assaulted by bandits that to to be perfectly frank that's already 95 percent of like medieval like lordship being like yeah as long as you're paying us we'll make sure that you know your entire you know fucking livelihood isn't fucking destroyed bitch <laughs> it's like oh my lord my lord please i have a family being like i do too and we need money <laughs> So come on, cough it up. Come on, don't don't keep me hanging here. What do you want me to do? Starve? <laughs> We're we're uh, we 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 believe in being a uh, equal opportunity, you know, horrible human being in this household. Investment. Uh... Being like we don't discriminate. At, you know, we don't. You know, we don't. In, you know, we we do not believe in. You know. You know, discriminating on who we, you know, violently assault. <laughs> who do you think we are, monsters? <laughs> We're not monsters. We're just really fucking evil. <laughs> like, oh. Uh, let's just readjust some of these things. So, glory is fairly difficult. I think fortification is always going to be expensive. Uh... Actually, let's do 35 for both of these. So neither of these are very efficient. Imp owning, like, a keep or a fort or any of those things is not efficient. It sucks. Because you have a lot of dudes, but you don't really have a lot of ways to use those men. So if you own a fort, it's effectively a, we're going to go a ra raving. You know, we're, we're going to go out and we're going to start killing people for their money. And it's just a lot easier to, you know, kind of get those larger armies. But you're going to be, like, fielding a bunch of militiamen. You're going to be fielding dog shit units. You just don't have money.
depends. If you own a fort, I guess being a mercenary warband may work for you. Effectively, like owning a owning a fort is you are effectively bear you don't make money with a fort. You effectively would be to play a fort campaign, you would be a bunch of people who bully the others around you. Or you are making power plays to in a, in a region because you have you are very powerful because you have the most amount of men if there are villages nearby especially the villages cannot stand up to you you outnumber them you're always going to outnumber them and probably they don't have any fortification at all so it's very easy to route them and if you know what you're doing it's like yeah we own a lot more territory we're not necessarily mercenary but if you don't pay us we're just gonna burn your house down. And you know, like if you do a full if you sack a location, it's gonna go down by half these values. Which like a village going down by half isn't actually that much. If you really think about it, a village going down by half its value is going from two to one. That's not really anything. A sacking it is going to be the exact same thing as uh, effectively just owning it. So that's like, oh, well, no one really, it doesn't really matter. That's why villages are difficult to grow in more hostile areas because they just get raided. <laughs> However, you sack a city, you sack a city with eight wealth, you get 16 wealth right off the bat. 16 wealth can very easily buy you a new investment. If it's bigger than that, if you sack one of the major cities in Kallus, you will be filthy fucking rich. You will have more money than God. <laughs> All of a sudden, you have a lot of money, and you can do whatever you want with it, but it's very difficult. Like, think about it like that. Like, 60... 60 wealth is you can effectively buy out all your investments you would ever possibly need. You are no longer worrying about shit like that. Mm. Uh, castles are pretty much only going to be able to make that. Castles don't really have to worry about glory. You can always kind of build your glory up. It's just, again, very fucking expensive to build your glory up, so it's not really worth it. Uh, manpower, but if you're, the thing is, like, if you're already making every season 50 wealth because you own a bunch of things, investing 35 wealth into improving the glory of one of your, like, major areas is bad. Like, that's not really, like, that doesn't hurt as much. Really speaking, it doesn't hurt. Uh, doesn't, there's nothing, no limit on manpower, there's no limit on fortification. Fort maximums, though, like... <laughs> How much money can my fort manage? Two. You can make two, and that's investing 20 wealth. Over 20 wealth, over 12, over, effectively, like, uh, that would be uh, 12 seasons. Over 12 years and 20 wealth, you can amass two gold a season, two wealth a season. It sucks. <laughs> Like, oof, investment is painful. Investment is expensive. It's expensive and it's long. That's the that's the main crux of the issue at, at the end of the day. It's expensive and it's long. But if you own a good town, then kind of building that up isn't a bad idea. If like the center of your domain is a big ass fort then building that big ass fort up is not going to be a like a problem to you that's going to feel a lot better because like this is our home building up you know fucking zed into a cool like town and then building it up to a city is an accomplishment you spent a lot of money you spent a lot of time it also costs you a lot of men and ire for the big, you know, for the biggest fish in the room, effectively. Or you're effectively, you know, working with them, which again, 
Just because you're like, oh, we want to play a combat campaign doesn't mean you're not going to get stuck in the middle of politicking. Hey, we the big guy on campus make pays us not you know to effectively harass his neighbors. We we've been getting paid yeah you know, we've been getting paid to threaten them so they pay him for for, for fucking tribute. It's an entire Ponzi scheme. We've been running the largest medieval Ponzi scheme. In Thank God no one's realized that we're all actually just fucking monsters. Thank God no one's realized that we're all horrible, horrible people. <laughs> Imagine that. But it's also kind of one of those things of like, hey, maybe, maybe you want something more in life. Maybe, maybe you're feeling a little bit more, uh, oh, I don't know, a little bit more ambitious all of a sudden. Suddenly, it's like, hmm, this guy relies on us getting all this money for him. Maybe I want a cut of the profits. Maybe, maybe I want something a little bit more. Maybe, maybe I deserve a little bit more than what I'm getting. Am I a bad person or am I just doing what, what needs to be done? You don't understand. I've always been a bad person. Uh, fortification, uh... Theoretically, Kirks don't have a maximum glory. They are going to have a maximum manpower of about six, about, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll call it about, about 800. The idea of a Kirk is that it's effectively a city built around an, uh, like a thing. This is a incredibly cultural significant location for zero reason other than that it is culturally significant. There aren't, like, Kirks don't actually have that many people in them, mostly people who want to fight. That's like that's not really a thing. Like fortification will bring it up to like thirty. Like you can you can you can defend them a lot, but like they're not. They people protect Kirks. People will protect the Kirk, but they're not really going to expand out from a Kirk. That's kind of one of the ideas. Like if you if you started a shrine, you're you're kind of indicating to the GM a little bit, saying, hey. We want to play a little bit more. We want to play a game that's going to be a little bit more slow. It's going to be a little bit more intrigue focused because it's like, hey, a lot of people want what you have. But do like you may not have anything of value, but they want your support. You might own like, hey, you own a shrine. You're on the only shrine in the entire area. Suddenly people are like, hey. Do you want to work with us? Because we're here. You can kind of play that little power, bro. You can kind of play that little power, uh, power game there. Uh, it's going to be hellishly expensive to improve that. I'm going to flip glory and wealth around for these two. Uh, manpower, on the other hand, yeah, I guess we can make a manpower pretty expensive still. I mean, I guess what we can do is we can do this. Very easy to improve glory. It's a little bit more difficult to get, like, people willing to fight. Because, like, who the fuck wants to live out here? Fortifications is going to be expensive all around because it's stupid fucking fortifications. Fortifications will just make you go bankrupt. <laughs> like, that's the thing. Nobody wants to build the walls, but we need the walls. Okay, so, uh, hold on. Mm. Let's see. What is maximum in, when a folding has reached its maximum, maximum investment in, uh, in a category, uh, reached its maximum investment in all categories. In all categories, they qualify for advancing to the to the next tier, uh, to the next tier of development, uh, next tier of development. Mm -hmm. 
The clan will spend 100 times tier, so effectively 200 wealth, 300 wealth. Oh, uh, wealth and... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Uh, a decade would be a decade would be twenty seasons. Actually, build over. Uh, it's going to be Once fully developed, they will gain a new investment for free, uh, which will will be applied automatically. So minimum, it's going to take about a decade for, hey, this town has clearly escalated from a town into a city. This, you know, this village has clearly escalated into a town. It's going to take a while, but it's kind of like the we've made a significant... A maximum at this with the 46. If you roll the lowest, it'd be 22 years. You roll maximum. That would be an additional 24. It would be an additional decade. And you know, no, let's do 2d6. So it's a little bit chaotic. So you can do up to another 6. It's pretty much it's another 1 to 12 years, roughly speaking of development you're still getting all the resources out of it it's not like oh it's it's not there but you're not investing anything in it either because it's like you've maxed everything out you have maxed everything out in that place already you don't need to invest in it any further that's not like why bother at that point you've already you've already done that but what we can do holding investments mm -hmm. Road work. Roads on Cal roads are Cal roads on Calais outside the Anesian co Anesian coast, and some Ruar Ruar uh, Ruar and Uda territories. Territories are sp are sparse trails trails and sparse trails trails and paths, and paths for the occasional uh, for the occasional wagon or wary traveler. Or wary travelers. Should the should the clan feel uh, should the clan feel it's necessary feel it's necessary they may in, they may invest they may invest ten wealth per tile. Uh, they may invest ten wealth per tile at two at for four season for, uh, for. No, we'll do for four season. Uh, they may invest ten wealth, ten wealth, and four season and four seasons per tile, per hex, hex to per hex to construct to construct a construct a new road to construct a new road, new road in that tile, in that tile, in that tile. Should they? Uh, uh, they may if the. If the if uh, the roads will ro roads will never roads will never disappear here unless the unless a war band unless a war band or arm unless a war band purposely purposefully let's see roads will never disappear unless a war band purpose purposefully uh, begins tearing them begins tearing them up. In a month long, in a month long process, month long process across an entire, across an entire hex, across an entire hex, mm -hmm. connecting uh, uh, if a if a war if a war ban if a war ban or 
if a war band or other threat or other threat enters a tile being constructed uh, with uh, enters a enters a hex with a road being constructed constructed uh all work all work is lost uh, see all work is lost as the work as the as the peasants are slaughtered uh, uh, the peasants are slaughtered <laughs> Uh, uh, slaughtered or forced to flee or forced to flee for their lives it's kind of like yeah you can build roads however <laughs> there's a reason we don't use roads it takes for fucking ever mm -hmm. I should say a uh, side note uh mm -hmm. Mm. Mm. He wrote in an impassable hex. Mm. Lost 30 wealth and additional 2 E seasons of work due to the conditions. Mm. Most of the road work will only take place during the sun season as well. Uh, halting progress. No, this is a bit detailed, so mm, use it at their own risk. Nope, I don't want to add a drawing. Insert table. We just want to do a quick side note, like, hey, if you want to do if you want to do this here's a little you know here's a little bit of more detail on roads like do you really like do you really want to have more details on fucking roads do you want to have more detail on roads we can go very autistic on this i don't want to though um all right so we're going to Fiefs, uh, we'll do fiefs and vassal. Fiefs and vassals. Mm. As deta as detailed in the clan as detailed in the clan section. Uh, actually. Actually, no, we can put a big image. I know what we can do. We can put a, this is gonna, this is a little dense. So we're gonna put a big image here of just a nice road or something. Being like, yeah, build roads. Become the road builder. Uh, titles. Mm. Uh, traditionally, actually, um, actually no, we'll just do Thieves and Vassals and we'll put a big side note about titles. Uh, so I can get really autistic about it. Thieves and Vassals. Mm. As, de as detailed in the clan, as detailed in the clan section, a clan can only uh, can only manage as many holding as many holdings as their authority, as their authority as their authority plus one. We are managing their authority plus one. If they exceed exceed their limit exceed their limit, uh, mo if they exceed their limit. Their exterior exterior holdings will soon will soon uh, rather pay. Will will uh, soon forget who is in charge who is in charge or other or other forces other forces may move may move into into the into the new into the power vacuum power vacuum. Hmm. The clan, uh, the clan head, under their discretion, under their discretion, 
under their discretion, may, choo may choose to uplift, uplift another clan. Uplift another clan to serve as a serve as a vassal. These vassals, a vassal, a vassal clan. Mm. That owns fealty, that owns fealty and loyalty. Uh, fealty and loyalty to their uh, to the clan head. The clan head and are an extension of the clan of an extension of the clan themselves. Clan themselves. However, this new this new vassal clan, this new vassal, this new vassal clan counts as a single quote holding for all of the territory for all of the territory, all of the territory, all of the all of the holding holdings they would own. Would own. Mm. Mm. However, this new vassal clan counts as a single holding for all the holdings they would own. Mm. For uh, for example, uh, for example, Clan Badig, Clan Badig own, owns owns five owns five holdings with only a cap, only a cap of four, only a cap of four, with only an authority allow with only an authority allowing four of them, four of them, eyeing a new uh, eyeing a new eyeing a new town on the horizon, uh, uh, eyeing a new town on the horizon, the clan had the clan had elects to create create a vassal. A vassal based out of based out of two of their village two of their villages. Mm. 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 Oh, a clan created a uh, created vassal based out of two of their villages. Uh, each village, uh, each village has has has. Uh, we'll say, we'll actually make this has three wealth, has three wealth, three wealth, one gl uh, three of wealth, one glory, and a two and one hundred and one hundred manpower. As in total, in total, in total, the vassal, the vassal now own now owns six wealth, two glory, and two hundred man and two hundred manpower. They would deliver. They would deliver half of that, half of that uh, back to half of that back to Clan Badig. Clan Badig. Mm -hmm. Uh. While still, uh, while still only, while still only, only counting as a single holding, single holding, placing them, placing them back under their, under their, placing them back under their limit. Kind of the idea is like you want to take multiple, multiple holdings you own and then like give them away, kind of like section them off a little bit. Mm hmm. Can you build roads the Roman way? Somewhat. <laughs> a month per mile of road. How big is a hexagon? Uh, hexes. Let me, uh, let me, let me, let me see up here real fast. Let me go to the travel section real fast because uh, <laughs> this thing's 120 fucking pages. <laughs> uh, travel, travel, travel. Boots on the road. Uh, each of them is about 12 miles. Each hex is 20 kilometers. <laughs> so yeah, uh, they're about 12 miles. So, roughly speaking, about a, uh, about a year. That's small. Yeah, it is relatively small. Uh, because pretty much originally it was 
one day takes one one day is one tile then i kind of change it around because i'm like that makes Calis fucking huge it was double the size of the uk almost exactly double the size so i'm like if i cut it down in half it'll be about the size of the uk one of the issues sterner is as well a lot of the road a lot of callus sucks it's just shitty territory <laughs> you don't want to build roads just fuck building roads that shit's expensive that thing is it's difficult it's expensive and it's annoying so you don't really want to do it that much uh yeah generally speaking you could travel about two hexes a day if things go relatively well it takes about a month to cross the entirety of Callus by boat it's very easy to get around on boat uh to give you an idea though of the uh, number of hexes on the map zoom up here uh eh. so i actually counted uh each of those would take about you could move about two of those a day along a road it counts as about half half a movement so kind of progressing along the Anesian coast here, it's relatively quick. You can get across the island in about half a month. Pretty easy by road. Not by road? Well, that's going to take a little bit longer. It takes about, I think about a good month, roughly, of you are. But that's, you're, that's for food, that's for resting, that's for taking your time, no horses or anything. Especially if you go up north this way, because that's just filled with nightmares and not fun things. Or of course you can just go up here and have to deal with fish people. Damn fish people! <laughs> I guess I forgot about the Tata Glens and their roads, but fuck Tatigs, no one likes them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. 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 Let's see. Creating vassals allowed a clan head with larger territory to ma I more carefully manage it while ensuring loyalty of certain allies or. Mm. Maintaining, maintaining independent independence of you know, those willing to bend the willing to bend the knee. Keep the va keep the vassal vassals uh, vassals won't uh, vassals won't easily easily surrender surrender their newfound newfound territory easily either easily either. Trust is a trust is a two. Trust is a two-way road. Kind of the idea of like, yeah, you can more easily manage things. However, under fucking stand that they're not going to want. If you give someone territory, it's also it's not only a way for you to manage your territory. It's also a way for you to reward people. Hey, this guy has been a badass. You know, you're a character who is, you know, you played a character who is not necessarily part of the family. You've been a hot, you've been a hot, you've been a badass this entire time. You kick some ass, take some names, uh, and you know, it's like the clan head. You know, another player is like, hey, we're gonna give you territory, as kind of a subtle way of saying we're retiring your character somewhat. Especially if it's an older character, and like I, I feel like I want to retire them a little bit. You know, play a younger one. And it's like, okay, we're giving you territory. And now you have a completely different branch of family that kind of doing their own thing. But two generations down the line, things might get a little bit more complicated. Because suddenly it's like, ooh. Ooh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, spaghettios. Loyalty is a bitch. Mostly so you can recreate some fun incidents in, like, Crusader Kings. My favorite things in Crusader Kings. Personal anecdote. My favorite things in the Crusader Kings are always the recurring events that, that show up every now and again. 
certain families show themselves again and you're like, that son of a bitch, he's back in my home. That motherfucker and his giant ass family. It's like, yeah, I, like, I fought your goddamn grandfather. We killed each other. Now you're back. God damn it. Go away. You, you develop these weird vendettas against these characters. And you're just getting mad at them when you see the little, little, little symbol. You're like, that son of a bitch. It's him. It's that guy again. Or it's like, oh, wait a sec. Oh, it's like, oh, it's him. We, we were really good friends three generations ago and now you know you're back you were like my tr trusted man and now you're back with like 1800 fucking children and like uh oh i need to kill them all because they're being dumbasses um this would be um... each territory each hold all the hold all of the holding all each holding each of the holding each of the holdings across callus across callus are split up are split up into individual 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 larger territories territories mm -hmm. these territories uh, these territories can have anywhere anywhere from one from one to five different holdings, holdings, holdings inside of them. Uh, these territories can have anywhere from one to five different holdings inside of them. Mm -hmm. All play a part in one another in one another's economy, economy or cult, uh, or culture. That all play, that all play a part in one another's economy or culture. Hmm. If a clan, if a clan were to dominate the entire territory, dominate the entire territory, uh, by uh, by taking control, by taking control of all of the, all of the holdings, or owning owning the soul holding, holding, uh, they will automatically they will they will receive uh, they will receive a. Free investment, free investment in any of their chosen, in any of their chosen features. Free investment in any of their chosen features for all of the holding, for all of the holdings inside of the territory. Uh, investment of any of the chosen features. And, mm. kind of the idea of like hey we've managed to actually take control of an entire area everyone's linked together here we get a free investment like we get a free autumn i should say free immediate investment hey we take we took this entire territory with two town with a town and two villages in it we can increase the wealth by what by a certain investment for each of these because hey this is a place that we have established ourselves and everything's kind of interlinked together with these and we, like, we own in full territory. It's effectively you own a duchy. The duchy itself is not important. Re always remember this, kids. It doesn't matter that you hold the ducal title. If you don't own any count titles, you don't own anything. <laughs> That's the beautiful thing. Welcome to Crusader King's logic. And that's why anytime you play Crusader Kings 2 or 3, take away their fucking count titles. Don't take away their du ducal titles, because they won't lose actual territory. <laughs> they'll, they'll just lose the right to own that territory. Uh, they'll receive free immediate investment in any of the chosen features for all the holdings inside of territory. Mm -hmm. Kind of a simple, fast way of doing things, but... Mm. Mm. Actually, if the... See, the vassals granted an entire territory. Uh... 
holdings we're gonna put actually i could probably put if i put territories and holdings there we put fief and vassals there we still have some room for a side note here we still have some room for a side note there actually we can probably put an image right there uh and that could work pretty well here's the beautiful map uh then we're going to if we do as the major as the major power block as the major power blocks as the major power blocks of of po of the post tyrus of the post Tyrus, Callus, uh, Callus begin to form. Uh, power blocks of the post uh, Tyrus, Callus begin to form. A larger scale, larger scale, scale wars will begin. Will begin. Will begin to break out. Will begin to break out between between the newly crowned, newly crowned kings, kings of the island of the island. And this occurred when. Where warband, let's see, where warband conflict, where warband conflict could be considered, things could be considered micro, micro warfare, micro warfare as each, as each of the unit, uh, each of the units are man, are managed individually, managed individually, while large scale war, while large scale, mm, Warfare is the is the macro scale. Good cabaraching, yes, good cabaraching. Uh, yes, good cabaraching. Everyone, uh, I did debate for tomorrow's stream. I did heavily debate on just making uh, everyone a katana wielding dumbass, but I decided against it. Uh, <laughs> I hope you know that, McDrew Salt, just because of Kamarachi. Uh, I decided against it because I read Patho you know, Pathogen and realized Katatas get a armor penetration bonus in that game. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe not. <laughs> Absolutely not. This is dumb. <laughs> uh, we're going to do red markets tonight. What's the case tomorrow? The, the uh, infectious case of Zombinos. Uh, I thought it'd be appropriate for Halloween to kind of talk about some zombie games. Of course, we're doing no, we're doing no zombie game that is like well known, of course, because why would I do that? I still need some fodder for um, the, the horror case. Uh, yeah, we're. I was pleasantly. I, w I went over last night. I went over pathogen unclassified. And infected. I was pleasantly surprised by infected. It's a weird game, and the system's a bit goofy. But it's a bit goofy that I can get behind. That's kind of like a big thing. It's a it's a it's a very weird system. Uh, infected exclamation point. Yeah. <laughs> When I first read it, I'm like, the fuck are you on about? Because it's a... The best way to word a infected is that it's not a 2d10 system. It's a 1d10, 1d10 system. And it's a, that's a very particular way of wording it. It's a 1d10, 1d10 system. Uh, fucking weird. And I know why it didn't really pop off, I guess. But 
I think going over it will be very interesting. Uh, I'm curious to see what people think about it. I liked it, actually. Uh, I actually quite enjoyed it. I thought it was very good. I do have one called All Things Zombies, but All Things Zombies is actually a war game. So I've been, I was kind of going back and forth if I want to do that one. If I've got time tonight, I will. If I don't, I won't. Uh, let's see. So, Micro War for Large Scale Warfare is the macro scale. Instead of... Mm, when built when building in, when building an arm when building an army group the clan uh the clan will will instead put manpower will instead put manpower in one lump sum well, one lump sum and send out send out a send out a force with the intent with the intent of laying siege a uh, laying siege to a location or fighting, or fighting other, uh, fighting other small, uh, other army, army groups, army groups in the in the in the field. Mm. Mm. Uh, let's see. These lumps of men are not defined until until the gr until the clan wishes mm. engage in a war band in a war band bat. Engage in a war band battle um, battle with them with them assuming they are they are present present in that in that army group <laughs> Kind of like are you actually even there? It's just like this is a hundred men. We don't know what hundred men are there We just know that there are a hundred dudes. It could be 20 or it could be a hundred militiamen or it could be 20 You know fucking cavalry. We don't know yet until we start playing it uh, assuming they're present in the army group. Mm. When the uh, when the army when the armies of when the armies of. Uh, when two hostile army groups, when two hostile army groups clash in the field, clash in the field, clash in the field, both sides, both sides will gather, both sides will gather their d6, will gather their d6s and attempt, and attempt to beat one another, uh, beat one another in a, mm, attempt to beat one another in a single, in a single check. We'll attempt to beat one another in a single check. Both army groups. Mm, the army group. Mm, the leader of the, the leader of the army group. Uh, army group will roll. Will roll their stewardship. Stewardship plus. Stewardship plus uh, leadership. Will the stewardship plus leadership. But at mm, actually, <clears throat> I've seen this one before. Hmm. That's right, neat. I can work with it. Let me hit the download button real fast. Live on air, notepad and on downloads game. I, I have a few ideas of um, what I want to do for the horror game. I actually have one horror game already like planned out effectively. I received it right away. Uh, I received that actually from like someone was like, "Hey, can you please go over this game? It's it's launching." I'm like, "Cool, we'll go over it. Let's talk about it." Um, I'm gonna try to find Final Girl because there's like three games called Final Girl. It's kind of weird to say. There's like again, there's like three games all named the exact same about the same exact idea. And uh, my my goal is for that part for the horror case. I'm going to dress up as Tommy Jarvis because. <laughs> You may not know it, but I am secretly Tommy Jarvis. 
It's that or going to be me in a Speedo. There's going to be no in-between. So I, I will I will leave it up to the people of what they want. Do they want Note Speedo or do they want Tommy Notepad? Do you want Notepad Jarvis? You got two options. <laughs> do we blast California girls? Uh, that'll be the opening song is California girls. <laughs> Leader of the army group will roll in. Against their uh, against their opposite against their opposition. If they are leading if they are leading a significantly uh depending on the let's see actually their opposition. Depending on depending on a number a number of factor depending on a number of factors they will be able uh they will be able to add additional additional d6s to their to their roll to assist to assist them in on the field to assist them on the field the system on the field and we're going to add in what they are we're going to add this i don't know what's going on here everything is broken like my life god help me ah california girls i'm <laughs> up uh Yeah, fine. There's one from 2011, and then there's another one. Though that might, I know it's one of those things. Like I damn well know there's like two Final Girl RPGs. They are the exact same premise. They're just slightly different. That's what I remember. They are different companies, different things. They're just the exact same game. Uh, finding that, no idea. I'll f eventually I'll find it, but. Mm -hmm. I distinctly remember Final Girl because I actually saw that was one of the very few times I've watched a um actual play podcast because there was a there's a podcast that I actually really liked for a time uh, I haven't watched them in years though uh, because I just haven't felt like it more than anything and I'm th there's no like grand mystery there I just didn't stopped watching them because I just didn't feel like watching them anymore uh, but they did actual plays they were like one of the first ones to really do that uh, one of my Oh, you. This is a table, technically. Um. Actually, um, army, ar army training. Hmm. Hmm. So it's like you have a marshal of one or two, you know, one or two better. You know, you're going to add an additional D6. If you have a marshal of three or more better, then you're going to add two an additional 2D6. Overall size, uh, moderately larger, much larger, overwhelmingly larger. Uh, the overall size of the army, of uh, the army group. Mm, overall size of the army group in... In raw number, in raw numbers or quality, I'm gonna I'm gonna put that as a quality. Uh, the position of the army and the other manipulate. Uh, so it's six. Mm. We 
We don't need to worry about Commander, really, because we're already kind of factoring that in. Supplies and resources. Um... So we want to do... Five, six to twelve, a little bit again, then we're gonna do thirteen. Oh, thirteen plus. Mm. Uh, extra rations. Wow. Um, I'm gonna put in Fix all of this by doing that. Uh, mm. Mm. Let's see, encouraged, um... Yeah, dedicate... We really want to win. Please dedicate 13 wealth, 13 glory to this. Like, this is an entire advancement of one of our, one of our fucking holdings. Please dedicate that to a single battle, but we need to win this. We are outnumbered, please God. Mmm... -hmm. And emerging victorious uh, to calculate to calculate casualty to calculate casualties on both sides. Um, cons um can do calculate casualties on both sides. Mm. Consult the follow. Uh, consult the follow. Uh, consult the following chart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually, 
left. Decisive, kind of like you did clearly win. Um, actually, clear, decisive. Mm -hmm. Uh, what would be overwhelming? Um, be a good overwhelming synonym. Overwhelming synonym. Mm -hmm. Overpowering, overwhelming, over... What would be a good name for a decisive, super awesome... You've completely fucking crush it, the... You know... Yeah, actually, no, we'll, we'll do crushing. How about that? And, you know, that's like, this is just a crushing defeat. This is a crushing battle. A uh, crushing. Um... Hard fought. Mm. Mm. Actually, no, we do zero, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. Hard fight. A hard fought victory is you win by tie, effectively. You did not win by virtue of being the best. You won because somebody ran out. Like, <laughs> if you continued the fight, it, it would, you'd effectively have to roll again. Like, it, it was a very close victory. Um. How do I want to, how do I want to do this? Because pretty much what I wanted to do is like the number of actual dice on the field being rolled. Mm. You know, a hard fought victory on both, you know, hard fought defeat, a hard fought, you know, a hard fought defeat, a hard fought victory. It's effectively the exact same. Um, actually, you know, what we'll do is, um, mm, they rolled 66. Mm. Army Group A rolled 66 and Army Group rolled 66. Both sides take both sides take 12 d6 damage. You've lost 12 d6 people of your army. You have both cra you know actually uh mm, both take total d 
Total D6, both take total D6s combined in damage, uh, times two. Uh, time. Both, uh, both sides take total, total D, uh, total D6s times two combined, times, uh, mm. Mm. And double that. Opposing uh, D sixes. Mm. Double opposing D sixes. Taking like no fucking damage at the at a decisive victory. Um, we're gonna make a quick example of this. Uh, so, uh, an example. In example, Battle of Boreal, Boreal Valley, Battle of Boreal Valley, mm. Clan Hadrian, mm. Mm. Uh, l l have come to have come to blows in the come to blows in the Boreal Valley, come to blows in the Boreal Valley. Mm. Hadrian is fielding. Uh, Hadrian is fielding two hundred. Is fielding four hundred able-bodied able-bodied men, while Ulm has well, Ul Ulm has has six hundred. Oh, well, Ulm has six hundred. Hadrian. Uh, Hadrian's. Uh, Hadrian's le Hadrian's leader is inexperienced to the vastly to the vastly more war wary. War where uh actually Hadrian's leader is war wary, war wary and vet and is a is a veteran while Ulm, while Ulm's is a bright is a bright if inexperienced inexperienced soldier. Finally, uh finally, both uh um, both have invested both have invested. Uh, quite a bit of uh, wealth and glory, a uh, belt of wealth into the success, success of this can, uh, success of this battle, a uh, success of this battle. Mm. Clan Hadrian, uh, Clan Hadrian. Uh, so we're gonna say they're gonna have a leader of leadership plus stewardship. Let's say they have a. Let, Four plus six, so they're they're gonna have they're gonna start with ten d six, so they're going to have ten d six, uh, which I'm just gonna put as leadership. Mm -hmm. Stewardship plus leadership, and then we're gonna look at army training. Uh, how it, they're going to have overwhelmingly, you know, better uh, veteran commander. They are. Better, yeah, he is real good. He's not the best leadership in the world, but he's got a, he's a veteran commander. He's got a clearly more martial. Uh, and we look at the battlefield. Uh, they've, let's say they've got the good, you know, they've got a good position and they've put in, let's say 10, let's say uh, 10, well, let's say they've put in some wealth. So they're going to be plus 2d6, well supplied. 
However, uh, Clan Old, they're going to have 11 D6. He's very well, you know, he's very good at stewardship plus leadership. They do have, so that would be, let's see, 600. So they've got about 50% more men than them. So that's 50% much larger. Plus 2d6, uh, plus 2d6, army size. Uh, I wouldn't say they don't have a good position, though, but they're going to be much better supply. They're going to have great supplies. We're going to say they have great supply. Let's say they're going to have 4d6 in great supplies. Mm. Okay, so... Armies come to blow. Armies come to blow. So I'm going to gather up my D6s here. So we've got 10 D6 currently we're rolling. Let me uh, let me grab all of my dice. We're going to roll this for or I'm going to roll this by myself because I can do this. So let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, I need five more D6s. Okay, that's 1, 2, 3... Okay, so we've got 15 d6 here, so we're gonna we're gonna roll roll success. So no no boons, no banes. Let's. Oh, not a great showing. Let's discard all the ones. Not a great showing at all, kings. Uh, Hadrian Bros, Hadrian Bros, how are we going to recover from this? Holy shit, they roll dog shit. They rolled one, two, three, four, five ones. Oh God, so many threes as well. They scored a total of one, two, three, four, five successes. Let's uh let's roll. Okay, so old. So they've got eleven D6. So we, let's see, we got five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we got eleven there. Two D6 from that. Three D6 from that. Alright, so uh let's see, one, two, three. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, yep. All right, seventeen d six. Let's. Okay, let, let's try to roll that a little bit better than that pathetic. That pathetic roll. Dice ASMR with no pad on. There we go. Big roll. So, uh, let's take out all the fails. Oh. Oh, Hadrian bros, it's so fucking over. That's not a good sign already. Okay, we've, we're not doing... Oh, that's not a good sign, though. Okay, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight successes. Oh, poor performing five successes from the 15 D6. Ohm, surpri Ohm, Ohm surprises rolling eight successes. Eight successes from their uh, seventeen from their seventeen d six. Uh, the old, mm, the old, the clan, uh, clan, clan old. Mm, uh, has won, has won a clear victor, has won a clear victory, victory this day, has won a clear victory this day. Hmm. But now, but now for casualty. But now for casualties. Mm. But now for casualty. Um. Om, uh, Om, Om takes half of the opposing uh, half of the opposing d6s with fifteen with uh ten twelve fifteen d6. 
but 15 d6 they would uh they would be they would be dealing with 76 casualties 76 casualties let's see four five six seven let's see how many casualties ulm takes uh ulm takes uh one two eight twelve eighteen 24 casualties uh, dealing uh, a total a uh, total of 24 24 men fell in uh, fell in battle Hadrian Hadrian uh, Hadrian's losses are far more are far more uh, are far more, more numerous numerous taking a total uh taking a total oh it would be uh 17. 11 13 yes yeah, 17 d6 it would be uh taking a total of let me just do a quick number here 17 times 2 34 d6 damage taking a total of 34 d6 damage however however uh this can be um, summarized easier as uh so 34 times 3 34 times 3 as a hundred two, as a hundred two, as a hundred two men, a uh, hundred two of Hadrian's, Hadrian's men dying in the va dying in the valley before, uh, before retreating. Mm. Mm. Thirty-four times three, hundred and two, hundred two of Hadrian's men dying in the valley before retreating. For context's sake, he lost a fourth of his fucking army. <laughs> of they lost barely twenty-four men. He lost a fourth of his force in just a clear, overwhelming defeat. You know, he rolled in there. He's like, "Yeah, okay, this guy's a kid. Doesn't know what he's doing. Got a little confident. Got his face smashed in." he didn't have you know i'm just like hey and that's how fucking deadly it can get you roll poorly in one thing and suddenly it's like oh okay we've lost a third of our men mm. Apple of ba battle of hell mm. maybe it's maybelline Mm. Yep. Mm. That's just kind of the idea of like, yeah, get as many of those little extra, extra little victories you can manage. Those extra little dice, because even having just a few extra dice can mean something like this. It's just like, yep, takes half opposing with 15d6, they would be... Mm. A total of seven, a total of seventy-six men. They lost twenty-four men. Fell in battle. Adrian's losses are far more numerous, taking a total of thirty-four d6 damage. For context's sake, if you rolled that out, they would have a amount of thirty-four times six. They could have lost half of their army there, or they could have lost thirty-four men. But they were going to take a lot more casualties. Kind of, that's kind of the idea. Like you have lot, you you have won the battle. You know, Clan Olm has won a clear victory. But again, they spent more money on it, so maybe that's not good. Maybe that's not a good thing, though. That's kind of the issue. It's like, is that truly a good thing or a bad thing, or did we just? waste a lot of men so let's okay that mm, that's actually possibly it i might have to throw in some more uh of these just to kind of get people a little bit more i probably will have to throw in a second one but that's just map uh, yeah, by the way, this is horrible. This is completely atrocious on both sides. A hard fought, to give you an idea of a hard fought victory in this situation, 
Uh, that would be 15 plus 7. If both of them, 15 plus 17. Uh, 32, 32 D6. Let's see. 32 D6. Uh, 113. Both of them would take 226 casualties. That is a hard-fought victory, what that looks like. It is a fucking bloodbath. Nobody won. <laughs> this isn't a victory. You won by virtue of, like, again, rolling zero extra successes is you won by virtue of eking out a small win kind of thing. You eked out a small, insignificant, you know, insignificant win. that make it nine successes i just want to make sure the math i just want to make sure the math looks correct but yeah ohm has won a pretty decisive victory today oh did you hear about the one yeah i heard about the hadrian's wall thing that the fucking tiktok tiktok has been a disaster for the human race and everyone who uses it belong on it Or Chinese. Well, I have a very, there's a very long, very long and fascinating conversation to have about there, Sterner. Uh, very long and very complicated question. Uh, this is not the place. This is not the time. This is not anything. We live in a society, TM. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Victorious in battle. 1d6. <laughs> you lose a d6 men, m, men. Mind you, if he rolled seven successes, quadruple opposing d6s, uh, with 17, it would be 17 times four. Uh, that would be 68 for a, on average, you would be roll, you, they would be taking 204 casualties. Upwards of a complete annihilation. Crushing victory, if you have a shit ton of dice, can very easily annihilate your fucking day just annihilate you. Damn. Uh, and that would be put that right there we're gonna do don't know why it keeps moving it does not like this image by the way next image on uh, actually want to be let's play I want to play a game Batman Batman, I want to play a game. Joker, no. Joker, what are you doing? It's an animal. Um. I believe this should work. That. Uh. Joker. Joker, no. A compass rose isn't the compass rose isn't exactly perfect, uh, so I might need to mix that up. Slightly. So we've got the two maps of Callus. This is the main map of Callus. This is kind of like the little bit more like the cultural makeup of Callus. You kind of see where everything is a little bit easier to kind of say like, oh. The the Demon over here, there's the Tatig up here. Demon and Tagged look a little bit similar. Uh just kind of the nature of the beast a little bit. Uh, here are the Nisians on the on the coast. We've got the Morin. Morin aren't very big, but the Morin are pretty much in the middle of a fight. Yeah, might be it. Right. So here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, obviously, I need to plug some of these some of these parts with art, just just to put some color in this back half. Uh, there's probably some errors that are that need to be rectified. 
but there's no rules against the Pokemon's clan's head. I can increase manpower to the Pokemon's. You can now make Nodamon Conquest. <laughs> we are not making Nodamon Conquest. We are not making Nodamon Conquest. You cannot force me. Uh, though, I will say, Clan Head did teach me that I can be very autistic about making maps. Uh, and that's a special kind of power that I've now gained over others with my if my increased if never ending true autism how long until someone pays you i will remind you next time you redux not a mod <laughs> have no fear team the thing is like the fact that i feel more confident making maps i feel pretty good about that uh would i ever do this again the scale again fuck no holy shit i added too much stuff oh god why didn't I make it easier? Oh, oh no! Uh, but, but yes, uh, I believe, what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna say it's done. Here's the thing, I'm not gonna say it's done done. I'm going to say that we are hit of, we have hit the point of it being at a completed state. Uh, I need to send this over and I'm, you know what I'm gonna do? Uh, I'm gonna hit this button right now. Copy link. Anyone with the link. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna send this over to uh, send this over to uh, the 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 man himself. Right, rough, <laughs> roughly everything is dunnerish. Uh. Mm. Yeah, this is 122 pages. This is, I believe this would be my longest game. I mean, Blood Coin and Steel. No, I think Blood Coin and Steel. No, Blood Coin and Steel is only 89 pages. Uh, I'm trying to think of what would be anything larger than that. I think maybe OG. No, maybe OG. Monster Girl Adventures might be literally not the right document, Lamau. I mean, this is no, this is 99 pages. So let's try this. Would be classic edition. This might be my largest, and if it's not my largest, it very much is. No, Monster Girl Adventures still claims that title with 124 pages. The classic edition, mind you. This is exactly two pages shorter than my longest game. Uh, and it is much better. <laughs> it is much better than my longest game. Fuck. GA Classic was a mistake. But yeah, it's uh, it's there. Most likely, I'll, you know, I'm gonna have to do like a once over on everything just to make sure that it looks all right. I mean, it's not perfect. There are some, there, there are details that are not super in depth. I'm really hoping he's not like, I really want perks. I'm like, please don't make me do perks. I'm begging you. I don't want to do perks. Uh, I, if he, if he does like, I really want perks in this. I really want this to really kind of make characters feel more unique. I have a few ideas on how to do them, but I feel kind of like what we have right now with kind of more of the clan being more important and the clan getting perks rather than you, the individual characters getting, I think that that's, that's going to be fine. Uh, yeah, hopefully everything goes smoothly there. I think there's a few areas for campaigns differences. I think the system is easy enough to understand. There's a lot of... There's just a lot of system, and I'm going to have to double-check some aspects of it going through. But, uh, yeah. I think we've made good progress. And if everything is good, we don't got to worry about it anymore. If everything is bad, we're going to worry about it next week. 
So, uh, thank you all. Godspeed. Good luck. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Tomorrow we're going to talk about zombies. Uh, most likely, if I'm, I'm assuming he's going to want some small changes, that's fine. I'm going to open up with those small changes. Uh, next week, if he's like, this is perfect, I love every second of it, it's the greatest thing I have ever read. Awesome. We're going to start on Fear and Hunger next week. We're going to start on the Fear and Hunger Redux, which is going to go a lot smoother. <laughs> Hopefully, it's going to go a lot smoother. Hopefully. <laughs> uh, but then, uh, hopefully, we're going to... We're, we're making good We're making good progress. It feels good kind of finishing something up. Uh, Fear and Hunger is going to be a lot more relaxed, hopefully. So I don't have to... I don't feel like I'm having an emotional fucking breakdown the entire time, but I... So, uh, thank you. Dort won't be here to see it. Uh, it do be that way sometimes. Dort's still alive, by the way. Love you, Jort. Uh, he is fine. He is alive. He's just been in a bomb shelter. What a shame. So, uh, I will depart as it, as it is the way. I am, as they say, away. Baloo. Belay.